Hey YouTube family, this is Mika Coleman with Tax Deed and Overages and today I want to talk about Tax Deed Mastery and how to profit at Tax Deed Auctions. Now I know I probably have mentioned this in the past but hey, it is 2024 and you gotta kind of like switch things up and I really want to talk about two ways that you can master this Tax Deed uh, auction strategy as well as mastering tax deeds in general. I know I've mentioned it in the past about over the counter, but I also want to talk about how you can profit at the auction. I don't know if you've ever been to an auction before or tried to buy properties at an auction, but it can be very daunting and it can be very discouraging, especially if you're going for your first time, your second time, and even your third time, you know, because sometimes you go to look the second time you go and to get your feet wet and the third time you take the leap and you actually bid in an auction only to find out <laughs> that you have so many competitors you can't even get a bid in. So this video is about how to master tax deeds and how to actually profit at an auction even if you don't get a property. So I like to get right into it. So one of the things uh, I talk about in, on my channel is tax deeds and overages. And so this is what this video is all about. For one of the things that you can master at tax deed auctions is when you go your first time, find out who your players are. Find out in that specific county how many people are bidding, who are like the number one leads. Now I have to say this, which um, lesson learned, but it has been a challenge because like when I want to invest in a new county, I do try to go and be like what they call a looky-loo and try to see like who my competitors are only to find out that is only like five of us there and then everybody gets the minimum bid, which pisses me off because I should have been prepared. So I would suggest um, if you're not scared and you actually have the money, prepare but you don't have to bid because had i prepared i could have had like three properties for like 15 g's but one of the things that i strongly advise is that i don't bid on anything until i physically saw it and ran my numbers even though it may sound like a good idea and be a great idea it may not be that great of a deal if you don't really know what you're buying so i never go against that rule because it's like why would i want to throw five grand away just for not taking a couple of minutes to do my due diligence so anyway how to master at tax deed auctions one you want to know like who your competitors are and like what are bids going to so like for example uh as you guys know i do a lot of wholesale strategies so when i go to auctions i'm just looking at how i can wholesale and flip it to an investor so i want to see if all the minimum bids that i'm going after are five thousand minimum bid what is that minimum bid going up to so like let's just say there are some counties where the minimum bid uh, starts at 500 and you know you want to know okay if these start at 500 where are they ending because you know that's a good deal but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go at for 500 so i say that all to say that if you're gonna master going to auction try to circle around like three auctions that you can go and get familiar with so that you'll understand like who your competitors are how many people are there i was so surprised one of the my first auctions have been by far only one of the biggest auctions. I take that back because Oklahoma. But my first auction was Houston. And when I tell you Houston is a massive, it's a massive. And I'm glad that was my first ex experience because my expectations was really high. Like I was like, okay, I gotta have this type of money. I gotta be on it. I gotta be like, yeah, yeah, that's me. Five, six, seven. I thought I was gonna have to be like all over the place. But what I realized was when I came to Dallas, I was like, is anybody home? Is anybody there? Like, okay, what's going on? And now after COVID, um, especially Dallas County is not even live. So I even like it's online. And that is also too for a lot of Florida, a lot of California. Um, Oklahoma is still live. There are a lot of places in uh, the surrounding Dallas area that are still live. I say that all to say that you can profit at these auctions and that's what this video is about. And I wanna talk about how you can profit at these auctions. So if you don't win anything, my friends, do not fret because let me tell you, I had a student fly out here and he was so happy and so ready to buy some property. He flew all the way out here. He had his cash. We spent all day like, you know, looking at the properties, running our numbers. And guess what? He didn't win anything. However, back then, I don't think I was 
No, I wasn't doing overages in um, Texas. I was doing them only in California. But what I've learned now is to strategize. Like if I'm going to be bidding on an auction and how you master at tax deed auctions is you want to do like a win-win. So if you don't win the properties, at least you have the overage numbers that now you can go help the owners collect the overages. And so that is the mastery of turning your auctions into profit. So just in case, you don't win a property, you still could win at overages. And so that's why I teach them simultaneously together. And I sometimes talk about overages and then sometimes I talk about tax deeds because in my opinion, they go hand in hand. I did have one student that actually just focused on the overages and he got the money from the overages. And when he closed an overage claim, he took that money and then he brought tax deeds. And so I feel like that, and it was like an infinite return because I think he only spent like 50 or 100 bucks for the claimant to get that claimant and then he took the money that he got from the overage and then he invested in tax deeds so i just always think it's like a win-win situation and also too you could also I, I i don't know this just came to mind for those that are always like the hustler mindset i try to like just stay focused but i was like hey that's a good idea because let me tell y'all some of these companies that be selling lists mm -mm, like i'm not gonna even name them but um, if they're selling lists, they're probably not in the business to give you the right list, okay? But I was gonna say, you can sell the information because sometimes the information doesn't come out. But guess what? If you go to the auction and you get those numbers, you get the numbers before the county even release them. Or even like the people that sell them online to the website, you're the first to get them. And if you're really like into that and you wanna like start a little hustle, I mean, that might be another way that you can sell information because now you have all the information before everyone else. Cause there's no way that um, the county's gonna put up that list until the deeds are recorded, number one. Number two, the people that are selling these lists online they're just waiting for the list from the county to release them so that could be a way that you could make money i just thought about that but i don't have time i'm not into like you know uh, stretching myself thin and selling the information i just look at it as that's another way that i can get ahead of the curve get ahead of my competition is if i go to the auction i get the numbers um i'm the one that's going to get first dibs on contacting them finding them and calling them before anyone else unless they were at the auction doing the same thing and trust me nine times out of ten the people at the auction aren't even thinking about overages let alone they don't even know about overages matter of fact i was at an auction and i was like okay let me shut up because uh, i'd be giving away too much information i was like yeah i was like do they have any over the counters and one of the investors was like what huh like what is that and i was like um let me get your name and number and uh if i find out anything i'll let you know and i'm like a lot of people don't no, number one, you could buy property straight from the county. Um, and I also learned a lot. I remember there was an attorney and he was, and I think this is only in Texas though, where he was saying they only could get bonds in that county unless they own property. So they go to tax deed auctions and that's another niche you could get into. Uh, I think I still have his number. I should call him, but he was just telling me that they, they come to auctions just to buy properties to get bonds in those counties. So that's like another niche that you can um, do with mastering and profit in tax deeds is you know contacting attorneys and seeing if they need bonds and you could like sell them your tax deed property for a little bit over than what you paid for so the two things that i wanted to tell you that how you can master and profit at tax deed auctions without winning a property because trust me it's really daunting and it could be heartaches because trust me there's properties i'm like oh my god please let me get this property i already have a buyer for it and i walk away with no property however you still could win even though you may not actually get a physical property and that is one by collecting the information for overages or two going and finding out what is at the over the counter at the property so i'm just going to reiterate if you go to an auction you don't win anything make sure you're writing down all the numbers that you get from that auction meaning if a minimum bid starts at five thousand and it sells for a hundred and let's just say twenty thousand now you have the overage amount for that county to either have somebody else sell the information or you can go and collect the overage for yourself by finding the claimant i hope this video helps and happy investing you guys